Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grave. Success on my mind. Good morning, me never good morning. Now how everybody did do this wonderful. Blessed and pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the fourth day of June, just like that, day number four. I am happy to be back home and I'm happy to be with you this morning for morning prayer. It is a very sunny morning here in Dangriga. The sun is glowing through the window, which is why my room seems so bright. The sun is glowing through the window and let me tell you, let me tell you, it is absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful indeed. I hope you're having a wonderful morning where you are this morning. We're going to kick things off this morning with one entitled, Lord God of Morning and of Night. Let's have a listen. That one there entitled Lord God of Morning and of Night, done for us by the Harvard University 
choir. <laughs> a beautiful and tranquil one to start our day this morning. Let's continue then getting our words up on screen for today, June the 4th in 2024. And let's see if I can make that happen here in 3, 2, and 1. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Words from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. Using versicle 2 on page 35. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our prayer of intent. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is canticle number 14, a song of penitence. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our mind can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sins and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. And therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all of the power of heaven, sing your praises, and yours is the glory to the ages of ages. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that, in thought, word, or deed, we may have committed. Things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, things that might have been unkind to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 45 and 47, and leading us using previously recording of using previously recorded versions of the Psalm. Reading for us Psalm 45 is Mr. Moore, and reading for us Psalm 47 is Miss Carol Young. Let's have a listen. Morning. The Psalms appointed for today's Psalms, chapter 45, verses 1 through 18. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. You are the fairest of men. Grace flows from your lips because God has blessed you forever. Strap your sword upon your thigh, O mighty warrior in your pride and in your majesty. Ride out and conquer in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your right hand will show you marvelous things. Your arrows are very sharp, O mighty warrior. The peoples are falling at your feet and the king enemy are losing heart. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate ingenuity. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia, and the music of strings from ivory palaces makes you glad. King's daughters stand among the ladies of the court. On your right hand is the queen, 
adorned by the gold of Ophir. Hear, O daughter, consider and listen closely. Forget your people and your father's house. The king will have pleasure in your beauty. He is your master, therefore do him honor. The people of Tyre are here with a gift. The rich among the people seek your favor. All glorious is the princess as she enters. Her gong is cloth of gold. In embroidered parallel, she is brought to the king. After her, the bridesmaids follows in procession. With joy and gladness, they are all brought and enter into the palace of the king. In place of fathers, O king, you shall have sons. You shall make them prince over all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore nations will praise you forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Happy birthday, Carol. Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He subdues the people under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of Haram's horn. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is king of all the earth. Sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together, and the people of the God of Abraham, the ruler of the earth, belong to God, and he is highly exalted. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We had a little bit of an issue with the second psalm, not wanting to play there, but that's okay. That's all right. We managed to get it done just the same. Our second canticle is the third song of Isaiah, based on Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3, 11, 14, 18, and 19. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, and deep gloom enshrouds the people. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will not be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your wall salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day and by night. You will not need the brightness of the moon, for the Lord will be your everlasting light. And your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, verse 53 to 58. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13. Reading from verse 53 through to 58. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. He came to his hometown and began to teach the people in their synagogues, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these deeds of power? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offense to him. But Jesus says to them, Prophets are not welcome, are not without honor, except in their own country and in their own house. And he did not do many deeds of power there because of their unbelief. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks, Nitrod. You would be so kind as to afford me a couple of seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading there from Matthew. Yes, and it's Matthew chapter 13, and we're looking at verse 53 um, through to 58. And it's a short portion of scripture. And <laughs> remember yesterday we concluded that Jesus was giving many parables as to what the kingdom of God was like. And it is out of these parables that Jesus is trying to get the message of the kingdom to the people and specifically to his disciples. Huh? And as it turns out in today's gospel, yeah, when Jesus finished the parables, he left that place. And the disciples claimed to understand Jesus' parable. Yeah? Yes, Lord, they say. In verse 51 and 52, Jesus said to them, Have you understood all these things? And they say to Jesus, Yes, Lord. Then he says to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out his treasured things, new and old. And they were telling Jesus they understand the parable. And they understood the message he was trying to bring. But I doubt that they did. Because their actions will betray them about the fact that they did not. Yes, they say yes, and we wonder if really the disciples did understand. Jesus did not. They did not argue. He did not deny their claim to being understanding of what he was saying. But assuming that the disciples did understand, they would have an advantage over the other multitudes of people that were there. The multitude went away, as most people do from sermons, never the wiser, understanding nothing of what were what they had heard, not caring to understand in some instances. But these scribes and the Pharisees claim these disciples, sorry, claimed that they understood, and so Jesus was giving them. A second challenge. You have heard my words. You have seen my things that I can do. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to challenge you to take out this word. Yes. And Jesus uses the, the word every scribe is construct is instructed. Sorry. Yeah. Every scribe is instructed concerning the kingdom. And Jesus was saying to them, everyone who really knows God's word will know the old and learn the new of the kingdom. He's not wary of the old, but he's neither afraid of the new. And so we find ourselves walking into verse 53, where Jesus is going to be rejected now. So remember, he was rejected by the Pharisees and the scribes with the hand, the healing of the hand of the withered, the man with the withered hand. But now he's going to face greater rejection. And it's the whole people of Nazareth who seem surprised that one of their own could grow up to do such particular things. We different in our day and time. In our day and time, one who has grown up around us, growing up and taking over things, ooh, that make us happy. We have friends in high places. Hmm? Because now, you know, we have friends in high places. But no, no. You would think that the people from Nazareth would say, Oh, look, this is Mary's son. This is Joseph the carpenter's son. This is a good boy. We know him long time. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, when you know somebody who has risen to power, you try to associate. They say, yes, man, this is my uncle, auntie, cousin, cat, sister, brother, cousin, twice removed friend. We try to make associations with those who we think are doing good things and those who are popular. But in this case, the people from Nazareth didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus. Whether it was because he was already facing opposition, whether it was because his ministry was weak and small, we don't know. But as it come to pass, they didn't seem to want to accept him. Now, the question, where did this man... Where he get all of this wisdom from? How can he do these mighty works? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is Mary not his mother? Are his sisters not our wives? Who is this man? Where part he come from? And that was the question they were asking. And because these villagers were familiar with Jesus as a boy and accustomed to own spectacular things from him, they concluded that Jesus must have grown up or should have grown up to be a normal boy like everybody else. Yeah? Unlike the fantastic stories that we hear of him closing the Old Testament coming into the new. Because that's what we hear. We hear some fantastic story of Jesus and his behavior. And let me tell you, there is no canonized copy of the infant years of Jesus. None whatsoever. So we don't know what happened during his infancy, but we know that there comes a point right in the early of his ministry that he is not accepted by his own people. And this question, is this not the carpenter's son? Is his mother not this one? Is his brother not this one? This this question is, I'll ask out of arrogant pride and prejudice. Hmm? Yet it could also be asked out of a deep appreciation for the fact that the son of God has taken such a lowly place. But that's not what they were thinking. They were thinking, who is Bali? 
where he come from, why does he feel he could tell us what we're supposed to do? Simple. Simple, simple, simple. Except it wasn't, because they were trying to entrap Jesus. And if they could entrap Jesus, what wouldn't they do to his disciples? So they would essentially make the movement stop if they were successful in their plot to um, work against Jesus. No? And listen, <laughs> Justin Martha, an ancient writer, testified that our Savior, even as he entered upon this ministry, made plows, yokes, and, and so forth. Yes? Because he needed people to be... On the same page, I don't want to say evenly yoked because they were working together, but not all of them were equal, e evenly yoked, you know. And it was an insulting question. Are his brothers not James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? This is this are insult insulting question, trying to intimidate the family of our Lord. Yeah, they were as if those saying, "Oh, small repute from this neighbor," except for their piety. Yeah, and Jesus, this Jesus can be a big thing because he grew up among us. He just he just one of, one of us. But that's not the thing. Jesus was so much more. And Jesus explained to them. Mm -hmm. When we think of how strongly Jesus is identified with Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth is his name. And to have Nazareth with Jekka. The people took offense at Jesus. Because Jesus said to them. Prophets are not without honor except in their own home tongue. I'm not sure you could ask most of our performing artists countrywide. Who have gotten the opportunity to go on a, abroad. And you know hone and share their skills when they are out there people scream the name people clap you know super hey and when they're in when they're in belize and we see them pass on their bicycle oh look so so and so they you know and and it's interesting because honor in our own country <laughs> seems a strange thing seems a strange thing but those closest to true spiritual being see just how normal they are and sometimes they think they aren't spiritual beings because they are normal yes and it's interesting because when a good person is doing for the kingdom of god they are just doing you know they're not doing it to be noticed by anybody hmm? they're not doing it to offend anybody they're just doing what they feel god has called them to do and we have to respect people's decision in doing exactly that hmm? a prophet is not without and i accept in his own country and his own household and so we often have this, 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 you know, this idea of when Jesus went home, maybe there would have been fanfare because the home crowd favor, favorite is coming home. Mm -mm. It wasn't like that. They all they saw was this are not Babsy, this are not Helen daughter. The Lee one who used to run wrong and tear up the prayer book. Yeah, that's she. Yeah, I am Helen's daughter, but I have, by the grace of God, grown to be able to use the gifts that God has given me for the proclamation of his kingdom. And this a familiarity breed contempt. I don't want to think so. And then you got one or two people who will act in a particular way and, and pretend that what I do is not real in order for them to feel comfortable about themselves. But for the majority, we live in a society where, for the majority, yeah? Somebody from the neighborhood save a jungling baby. Trust, best believe that everybody will be on news that night to see who saved the baby. And when they see who it is, oh, that my neighbor that I know so and so and a small man. And we give the backstory. And Jesus couldn't perform any miracles in this place because they didn't believe. And it is truly, in my opinion, truly remarkable that Jesus, in some manner, yeah, controlled what could happen for those who identify in, in, in disbelief. As long as, as God chooses to work in contact with human agents, developing our ability to partner with him, our unbelief can and may hinder the work of Christ. You know? But let me tell you. I can't imagine Jesus wanting to help his own people and not being able to because they don't believe in him. I can't imagine that. I could imagine the hurt he must have felt. Hmm? Mm. And you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Because he doesn't make a scene. This Jesus, does, this Jesus doesn't make a scene. He accepts that there are some that will accept him and some that will reject him. He has paid the price for all. He will pay the price for all. He doesn't care where the funding comes from. He is not concerned about who will support his ministry. He's not concerned about 
he, in this particular instance, his concern was, I can't do for my people because my people do not welcome me. And, and local politicians, local pastors, teachers, anybody who rises up from the community and gets to a position. Hmm? Don't forget to go back and check on your people. And sometimes your people might not welcome you, but that don't matter. You don't do what you do that the people might welcome you. You do what you do because God has called you to do it. It's that simple. It's, it's that simple. And due to their unbelief, Jesus could do no deeds of power there. Hmm? They didn't believe that Jesus could deliver people. They didn't believe that Jesus could make an abundance of things grow. They didn't believe that Jesus could calm the star. Because these were the deeds of power they were hearing about. But they didn't believe. And because they didn't believe, they didn't get any. It's almost as if Jesus was giving them exactly what they want. We can't believe that this Jesus is not what could come out good out of Nazareth. Can't. But in the end, when he does, then everybody has a paradigm shift in thinking. We have to remember. Yes? That sometimes the miracles not happening in our life is not because God doesn't want to give us. Sometimes we are like the Nazareth. Hmm? We are like the people from Nazareth. Nothing can be done for us because we simply do not believe. Pray God, help our unbelief. Hmm? Help us when we don't trust in you the way we should. Use us. Use us. Bring us to a fuller understanding of who you are and what kingdom living is like. A prophet and not without honor except in their own country and their own house. Don't look for the honor. All honor belongs to God. Amen. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy before we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall not hope in vain. The prayer for proper four. O oh God, your never-failing providence sets into order all things both in heaven and on earth. Put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things which are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We say, I call it for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no soul is drawn but the soul of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, who mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. Today in our World Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the people of South Korea. In our Ecumenical Cycle of Prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers who are members of the Moravian Church in South Africa. We remember and pray this morning for the family of Mr. James Young, 
who are still in search of him. And now we turn to our personal prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greeting to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Caitlin Williams, Mr. William Neal, Mrs. Cynthia Briagrand, and Miss Margaret Nicholas. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days ahead. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give God thanks for all those persons who have recovered from illness and surgery. And we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Kim, and Miss Jean. We remember and pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aislinn, Miss Justine. Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Marley, and Miss Toya. <coughs> Pardon me. We continue to pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma. We pray for Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Amy, Miss Molly, and Miss Melita. We remember and pray for Miss Marie, Miss Venantia, Miss Teresa, Miss Altia, Miss Janice, Miss Jessica, Miss Ruby, Miss Gloria, Miss Marva, Miss Martha, and Miss Betty. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta. We remember and pray for Miss Barbara, Miss Alicina, Miss Delvoreen, Miss Yolanda, Miss LaShawn, Miss Glenda, Miss Salome, Miss Felicia, Miss Priscilla, Miss Joycelyn, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Arlet, Miss Lorraine, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, Miss Sonia, and Miss Patrona. In our prayers, we continue to pray and ask for protection over the following. Miss Beverlyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alair, Miss Nina, Miss Leonor, Miss Tanya, Miss Robin, Miss Jean, Miss Camille, Miss Tasha, Miss Mary W, Miss Kieran, Miss Joyce, Miss Marcia, Miss Ismay, Miss Joan, Miss Uliche, Miss Lisa P, Miss Rita, Miss Louise, Miss Fiona. We pray for Miss Carolyn, Miss Gretel, Miss Kelly, and Miss Evelina, Reverend Tilona, Miss Sandra, Miss Elva, Miss Nadia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Lynette, Miss Natalie, Miss Del Bovine, Miss Charlene, Miss Shelmadine, Reverend Tilona, Miss Dominic, Miss Tanisha, Miss Brenda G, Miss Sandra, Miss Katrin, and Miss Sheila. We pray for Miss Irene, Miss Pat. Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Maisie, Miss Tracy, Miss Patricia, Miss Lauren, Miss Megan, Miss Tessa, Miss Delis, Miss Julia, Miss Shanice, Miss Kimberly, Miss Suzette. We continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We continue to pray for Mr. Zian, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa. Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Belhem, Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismail, Mr. Clement, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos, Mr. Pablo, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lindon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, and Mr. Shaw, Mr. Peter H., Mr. Ambrose, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Michael Sabaranis, Mr. Michael Summers, Mr. Colville, Mr. Donald, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Russell, and Father Constantia. We remember and pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Corey, Mr. GMR, Father Mark, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Chris, Mr. Trevor, Mr. Dave, Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Mr. Albert, Mr. Warren, Mr. Richard, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Omar, Mr. Franz, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieran, Mr. Devin, Mr. Anigi, Mr. Ivan, Mr. Ted, Mr. Paul, Mr. Clayton, and Bishop Wright. We continue to pray for protection over our medical professionals for their protection and enablement 
we pray for those who are professionally in the medical field and health industry and we pray for those who are caregivers who work at home in our prayers we remember and pray for Dr. Vidal Gomolina Mogila Arnal Manzanero Ariaga Shogun Ken Arana Julius Eck Lawrence Sosa Young Guayar Flores and Rosado we pray for our nurses praying for Nurse McKim Nurse Gil Nurse Joyce Lynn Nurse Lino Nurse Olivia Nurse Julie Nurse Herrera, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Ashley, Nurse Arel, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Sheree, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Cadogan, and Nurse Lexi. As we pray for those who are in the medical profession, we continue to pray as well for those who are unable to pray for themselves. We pray, Heavenly Father, give us life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants. Give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs. That those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We continue to remember and pray for the family of Mr. Clinton Rayburn, the family of Miss Myrtle Morris, the family of Mr. Kent Burgess, the family of Mr. Zavati Bodram, the family of Mr. Aaron Kenya, the family of Mr. Denise Cayetano, the family of Ms. Petrona Morales, the family of Mr. Jose Weaver, the family of Mr. John Martinez, the family of Mr. Roy White Sr., Mr. Roy White Jr. For all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon you during this time of bereavement, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Elisa, Tame, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Randolph, Ashley, Ria, Kai, Arian, Angel, Garrett, Rihanna, Jamal, Tiffany, Paige, Freedom, Austin, and Kishante. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Jason, Emil, Prince, Candy, Christopher, Charles S, Charles C, Sam, Gavin, Keishan, and Derek. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions, those battling illnesses such as lupus, MS, HIV, and AIDS, cancer in its various stages and forms. We pray for those who are living in situations of, of abuse. We pray for those who are troubled with mental health challenges, those who are battling with substance abuse issues. We continue to pray for our security forces, for the government, for the churches, for the private sector, for our non-governmental organizations involved in any form of humanitarian aid, for all persons in positions of public trust and authority. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the members of the international community, those affected by the ravages of war, those affected by the ravages of civil unrest, those affected and are in, who are in their various stages of recovery. As we pray for them, we pray for ourselves and our region against the ravages of civil unrest and wars and for protection against the ravages of natural disaster. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercession by praying together Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, my brothers and sisters, I want to thank you who have joined us this morning for morning prayer. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in the presence of Almighty God, as well as in your presence. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Following this broadcast, we have no day prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. 
if you miss any of our scheduled broadcasts at its scheduled time, you can always revisit the Facebook pages of the churches in the Anglican Diocese of Belize and catch a recap of those services. Mm -hmm. We can find those right on the Facebook pages of our various churches. Of course, we want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to conclude this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with this one entitled, Beautiful Brokenness, Hope for Despair. I like this one because of the words inside of it. I do hope that you will enjoy it as well. I thank you for joining me for morning prayer this morning. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, same place, same time. Until then, God bless and bye for now. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day.
Oh, oh, oh.